Guys, how you doing? Welcome to Dine at Home Week 18, the Tommy Bank Special. Uh, just want to firstly say a massive thank you to Tommy. Uh, what a lovely guy, uh, supported us. Uh, known Tommy for quite a few years, actually, to be fair. Uh, and uh, yeah, gave him the call, and he literally couldn't be happier to help us out. So I actually can't thank you enough, Tommy. And because of that, uh, and probably because of your notoriously good looks, you have managed to sell out this week. So thank you very much for helping us do that as well. So I was winning from here to here. So we're going to go straight into it, guys. Obviously, as mentioned in your little instruction um, pack, uh, this is a little bit more sort of cooking heavy, especially the starter. Tommy obviously wants to uh, make sure you're getting, getting to work on the starter. So uh, I'm going to be going through the pieces of fish with you, uh, and equally the garnish show you. I was really confident going into that into that cooking. Uh, and the main course of dessert is obviously a little bit easier because I've done maybe that most of the hard work for you. So on to your bread, because I normally forget this. So your bread this week is a different bread. Just a similar recipe to the milk bread. We've used a beotiful uh, sort of mill flour called uh, the Cotswold Crunch, uh, available online if you want to sort of check them out. And they've got like, loads of seeds in there as well. But this is mainly because one of our uh, quite, um, what would you call it? Sort of loyal, loyal customers who has had one, has had a box every single week from us, Marion and Tony. They consistently complain in a nice way. The, uh, the bread is always white. So we're going to go for a, a mixed grain wholemeal loaf, okay? Do uh, exactly the same as you normally do, guys. Make sure your marmite butter is obviously out of room temperature and your milk loaf, uh, or whether, should I say, your, uh, your Cotswold Crunch loaf. Goes into the oven for five minutes just to heat through, uh, and it'll be delicious and warm. And to be honest, the bread is absolutely delicious. The, uh, the milk flour is, is stunning. So that is your bread course. Uh, you can save for, your, for, your, uh, for obviously your starter if you'd like to, or uh, equally just enjoy that before the starter. As I said, you, you need to sort of um, prepare it quite a bit, to be fair. So. With your starter, you will have this ready mixed uh, sort of vegetable fricassee, which is fennel, uh, all cooked. So it's fennel, golden beetroot, and turnip. That has been dressed in elderflower vinegar and also in elderflower oil, all supplied by Tommy. But I've actually prepped them, cooked them, and prepped them for you. So uh, the hard work of that has been completely done. It's also been seasoned as well, so you probably won't need to adjust the seasoning at all. Next is your fermented strawberries. We've been asked to leave these completely whole. So these are slightly acidic, as you'll see. They're slightly acidic inside. Uh, we've left them completely whole, so uh, they're to slice or to dice, and that gets put for your mix as well, guys. Okay, you'll smell them straight away, they're really perfumey. Then you've got a really rich, almost like almost black chai oil that's to go through the, uh, the sauce, which is uh, a beautiful fish velouté. It's super, super thick. So when you come to reheat it, don't be scared of just adding a little bit of water, it won't change the complexity of the, of the, of the dish at all. Trust me, it just is really, really thick. So, again, if you, if you, if you want to sort of just loosen it a little bit then obviously add a little bit of water to that as well. And then uh, onto your cod, so this is organic wild cod. We have uh, brined it, and uh, obviously we've washed it. The majority of you guys will actually be receiving a piece of cod that is rolled, because it's the main fat loin that we've had to roll for to shape it, because it wasn't really a suitable shape. Uh, but then some of you will also have the tail piece, the lucky ones, because it's absolutely delicious. Uh, so I'm gonna be showing you how to do a tail piece this afternoon, or, or, or today. But equally, uh, every single piece of cod will also have like what I, I call the dirty side, which is the skin side. The other side is the, the, the flesh side. Always roast your fish on the skin side, the dirty side, because it roasts and colours up a lot nicer and a lot better, and that's where the flavour is. So you want to be roasted on that. So every single piece of fish that you, you receive, always put it on the dirty side. If, for instance, you have a, a loin piece, which is the roll piece, you won't have a dirty side. So again, you can just pop that on the side, on, on one of the side you choose and cook the majority of that fish on that one side. Okay, so I'll show you how to do it, but the same, the same, the same uh, cooking technique is for every piece of fish, okay? So first of all, talking about the fish, we'll jump straight onto that. We're only gonna be heating up the sauce, the little fricassee, and the fish, obviously cooking the fish. Uh, it doesn't need any more seasoning, as I said, it's been brined, so you really, really feel it. It'll almost feel, I wanna say tacky, but it feels sort of dry, like a dry piece of fish, because it's been brined. Uh, so pop your heat, heat on, I'll just put it on now. And with the heat, you don't want, it's not a piece of meat, you don't want to really scorch the fish. It needs to be sort of a, a, medium, a medium to high heat, but not, not too high. You need to be in full control of your pan, um, because yeah, it will really burn. There's, there's not a massive high sugar content of any fish, so you, yeah, it will seriously burn. So just, just keep in control of your fish all the time. But when we do put the fish down, we do want to hear that sizzle. You know, we don't want to put it into a cold pan. We want to ensure that that sort of fish is, uh, fish is coming up to temperature and cooking, uh, cooking correctly as well. So obviously, as always, as soon as you all start being a lot more sort of liquidy uh, and looser, that's obviously when your pan is hot. 
don't be uh, don't be frightened. My, my pan isn't hot enough yet, so I don't want to be putting that in at any time. Uh, the other two pans are simple, just for the fish balute and obviously for the fricassee as well. Start to hear that. Okay, okay perfect. So pop that skin, that dirty side down. You'll very faintly hear that sound of the fish starting to roast. There we are, perfect. So I'm going to keep my eye on that. That's a little bit sort of yeah, that's on the shallow side. We're going to start to get a little bit of heat. As soon as it starts really frying, that's when we're going to turn that down. Okay, so always stay in control. While that's cooking, I'm going to be popping in and heating up the, the fennel, the fennel uh, golden beetroot and the turnip. I only need half because this is uh, it's obviously for one person, this, this is for two. As you can see, I'll just do a pull out, you'll see a lot of that sort of oil and, and, and vinegar come through. So make sure uh, you're heating it up as well for me, then you won't want all that, all, all that flavour and bowl. Uh, and then obviously with your fish balute, again I need to eat a pizza part of this as well. Um, because it's this much for two people. So pop half of that in as well. Perfect. Okay, so pop that on a real shallow heat. And you only want to be warming this food to room temperature guys. You don't want to be sort of cooking it. It's been cooked. We just want a, a, a warm dish as opposed to a hot dish. By all means the sauce, we obviously want that to cook to heat. Uh, effectively, but the, 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 the fricassee, just take the chill off it, that's all that matters. Okay, so the fish, you can start to see a little bit of smoke incorporate around there, so I'm going to turn that down straight away because as I said, I always want to keep in control. So I'll flip that over, the colour's starting to colour now, it's starting to go that golden colour. So again, every single piece of fish that you get, guys, it will always go gold. So just roast it on one side, one side only, you don't need to flip it at all, just roast that on one side. I'll get a fresh spoon. Okay, so we've taken the chill up though, which is ideal. So they're nice and warm, not hot, just nice and warm, that's all we want. Our sauce is also heated up. The elderflower, the elderflower, the fricassee is so strong. It's all made on, 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 in, in, uh, in the black swamp. The elderflower, the vinegar, everything's all made, all hand picked by Tommy, obviously, as you know, he's a, he's a forager, so he's hand picked all of this. Uh, and it's made a delicious, it's delicious oil and vinegar for us as well, which is just, yeah, just the smell of it is unbelievable. Okay, so the sauce has come up now. Uh, it's in, like the consistency of that, guys, you can see it's like double cream. So I said to you, I'm going to leave that, but again, just add a little bit of water to it if you think it's going to be a bit too thick. Uh, again, I haven't sort of added it all in. I think I've left quite a lot of the fatty sort of creaminess in the pot, so just, uh, just be wary of that. Okay, so onto the fish. Let's just have a little flick. Okay, so that's beautifully golden on that one side. And you can also see, guys, it's like, almost like a rainbow pearlescent effect that's running up the fish, if you can get that on camera. That is like the ideal sort of colorization that you want on that piece of fish. So I'm gonna add just a couple of knobs of butter, because we're nearly approaching finishing time, Dad. A couple of knobs of butter, and then a little squeeze of lemon. Some chefs like lemon in fish, some chefs don't. I personally am obviously a fan of it. I'm gonna turn that oven and the pan off now. I'm going to sort of allow that butter to sit in that one corner. If you're doing two pieces, ensure that you bring your fish or both pieces of fish down to that corner where all the butter is. Just very gently cover the top with the, with the butter, be, be in full control, and then very gently just flip that over. And look at that, beautifully caramelised. And then just sit that butter all on top. All we're going to do now is because the majority of that cooking is sort of the that pearlescent rainbow effect came up the majority of that, that fish. That means that's what that, that's cooked. So we're just going to enable that to sit in that pan very, very gently for about 30 to 40 seconds. And I'm going to transfer it back onto a tray or back onto my board uh, just to rest for 30, 40 seconds. That's all that matters. So obviously the fish is a lot more delicate than meat. Because the flakes are so delicate, it will um, the, the heat will penetrate a lot quicker than meat. Okay, so that's been about 20, 30 seconds after heat. I'm very happy with that. So I'm just going to tie that off. I'm just going to very gently rest that on my, on my cooked board, and that's it, done. Butter, discard, we don't need that anymore. Fish is done and resting, sauce is hot. Your fricassee, uh, your fed or your beetroot and your, uh, your turnip is done. So now all that's rest to do is just to get your strawberries, and then just very gently dice them. And I will go slice down like that, and then if you can, with a not very sharp knife, Go in between like this, and then remove those, and then each layer just literally very simply dice them. And same with the next ones. Then dice those, and then any left, just really nice quick. And you get a beautiful dice, which then in turn goes through, and we get a beautiful 
freshness to your uh, or to Tommy's sort of cookie say, as you can see. Okay, guys. So this is for one person. So normally, if you get if you get two strawberries, they'll be they'll be a lot larger than this. Um, but then if you get three strawberries, because they're a little bit smaller, so we just sort of size them accordingly. So I'm going to get uh, a beautiful plate. Uh, but obviously heritage again, this is stocking plate. Try to get sort of a, quite a close sort of small small bowl. You don't want a big bowl because if you, you're uh, fishing, your, your garnish will get lost in it. So for the sauce, make sure that's still nice and hot. Pop your chive oil in it, and then you sort of want to split split the sauce with it. As you can see, it's all starting to split there now as well, which is really really cool. Okay, so onto plate in the dish. Super simple, guys. So nice little spoon of your garnish in the bottom. So, and then very gently get your fish, probably use a plate, uh, sorry, use a spoon, it would be easier. And then, very simply, guys, I've got a little uh, pour on the side if you want to, but equally, I'm just going to pour that in off the new uh, natural off the side, and pop that in nice and even. All out. And there's the dish, guys. So beautiful roasted piece of cod, organic cod with your uh, uh, elderflower flavoured uh, fricassee, the vegetables, and uh, uh, fermented strawberries. And finished off with fish velouté uh, split with chive oil. Thank you, Tommy. And guys, I hope you enjoy the starter. Okay, guys. So I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we've just eaten it, and I thought it was absolutely delicious. So big shout out to Tommy again. Uh, wow, the flavour in that dish was just sublime. I really hope guys you cooked the cod nicely, rested it, and flaked it apart, tasted delicious again, get it to any seasoning, so obviously it's already there. So I hope I've made it as simple as possible for you. But yeah, big up to Tommy, thank you so much for that stunning dish and stunning start. So I've got quite a, a quite a level to try and get to. So I'm gonna give it a good go with venison. First of the year guys, with the venison, back in season and venison's one of my favourite. Uh, this is uh ro 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 deer, yeah. So this is ro deer. Uh, Mikey sorts out all the meat orders, so yeah, road deer. We've also made our own faggot mix as well. Uh, we actually made this faggot mix to Adams, uh, me and Mikey. We actually uh, come up with a, developed a recipe there, and it's the exact same recipe that we're using this week. Uh, so the recipe that we've, we've obviously made in house uh, is all uh, all our own as well, quite personal to us. So uh, I hope you enjoy it, guys. I hope you enjoy venison. So in your um, little pots, you will have a beautiful roasted fondant potato, and you'll have a jerk carrot. Now this is a jerk carrot for one person. Some of the carrots are massive, so we've sort of done one between two. But you do it exactly the same, you just halve it after it's cooked. Uh, so with uh, Super Simple, you have uh, broccoli puree, uh, broccoli and kale puree. Uh, obviously you have your, your venison sauce, which is super rich this week, one of my favorite sauces I've made, uh, and a beautiful acidic uh, blackcurrant gel, which uh, cuts through the, uh, the dish beautifully. So onto a non-stick tray, guys. I'll just put a little bit of parchment paper, but you don't need it at all. I'll just put it for my own, my own, my own sort of peace of mind. It's so simple. Pop your potato, pop your venison shoulder, pop your beautiful faggot that we've just, we've just seared and roasted the outside. We haven't uh, cooked it all inside, so it's not going to dry out too much. So don't, don't worry about that. Pop all those onto a non-stick tray. Your oven's at 180. All I'm going to ask you to do, guys, is get a little bit of uh, butter and a little bit of salt and literally just pop a little lump of butter on top of your potato, a little lump of butter on top of your venison, and then literally with the other lump of butter, just try and press it down onto the carrot, just so it gets that little bit of chewiness. And then same with your faggot, just pop it on top. And I know it's a little bit fatty, but listen, it's day and night. This is what we do now. We're in our 18th week. We produce flavor here at Dine at Home. And this is how you produce it. It's that simple, do you know what I mean? This is the secret to restaurant food this is why you'll enjoy this in your home. Okay, so super simple guys, as I've said countless times, this tray in that oven for 10 minutes, two to three minutes before you're gonna, uh, before the 10 minutes is up, we heat up the broccoli puree in the microwave, we heat up the sauce in a pan, we leave this at room temperature, I'll see you in 10 minutes because we're gonna be ready to plate this, all right? Okay guys, so there is two minutes on my timer for the 10 minutes, so I have while I've been messing around, I've put the sauce in the pan and I'm literally just about to heat up the broccoli and kale puree in the microwave, which will do for 20 seconds, perfect. And then the blackberry ketchup, uh, you can put this into a little, in a little piping bag or a little bottle if you have one. 
I'll turn and spoon it onto the plate myself, but again, you can turn it too. Have a little try of it, guys. Uh, it's one of my favorite ketchups I've ever made. Uh, we've made this into the flavor. I love a black, black currant ketchup. Uh, and it goes so well with the uh, with the venison as well. Let's give it a little taste. If you think it's a bit strong, put a little bit on. If you think it's, if it's delicious and you want to put loads of it on, put loads of it on. You know what I mean? Just get a little, just get a little idea of the flavor of it uh, because you don't want to obviously um, surprise yourself and put too much on. You won't need too much, to be fair. So one minute or just under one minute on there. I'm going to grab my plate. Uh, because of what it is, because it's, a, it's the grey shoulder, it doesn't need a long rest. You know, it's not like a main fillet of a venison or beef, whatever, so we don't need to uh, be too conscious of the, the resting period. Um, but the rest for any meat doesn't, doesn't hurt at all. So as soon as that goes off, uh, we will get that out and we'll begin to plate it nice and quickly. Uh, the broccoli puree is obviously warm now. To be, uh, the uh, black currant is at room temperature. And then my sauce is just very gently coming up to heat. That's one portion of sauce, guys. Obviously, you've got to do a share and you'll have a full pot of sauce ready to go. It's not waiting for the uh, waiting for something to go off, isn't it? It's real. That'll be coming out in a second. Okay, the sauce is just starting to boil now, it's a bit here. So I'll turn that down a little bit actually now. There's the time that the real one is here. Beautiful. Turn that off. Be very careful with the heat. Turn that out. Wow. Absolutely. Okay, guys, there we are. So you can see the butter. It gives it a strip of glisten and colour to each of the products. So beautiful fondant potato. Same with your carrot. Look at that beautiful glisten. Look at the colour of that fag. It's beautiful and it's nice and firm, which means it's obviously fully cooked. And then your shoulder. I mean, look how soft that is. It's so soft. So please be super careful, obviously, getting that. I'm going to get a little sort of spatula to get underneath. I think we've got one. I think I have got one in here, which I have perfect. Nice quarter in. So get something along those sort of lines, guys, uh, because of getting is obviously, as you can see, it's so, so, so. So on to plating. Um, yeah, it's listen to you. This is the favourite part, isn't it? You can plate it however, however you wish. Plate a little bit of this. This is so vibrant and colourful, this pure H1. Make sure this is on the show. So pop that first. Big spoonful of that. Get all that delicious flavour onto there. We get a fondant potato. They're all similar sort of size and shape actually, so we can, this will look quite symmetrical on the plate. Right under that, yeah. Beautiful venison shoulder up. So soft. That will literally just melt. And you found it at the other end. And I'm just going to rest this cover just on top over those two to add a little bit of flavour. Look at that, that looks so nice. And then a small spoon, but I'm just gonna put we'll two dots of these. I mean, I absolutely, absolutely love this. With colour contrast, just that side. And then do one a little further up as well. Just on there, there we are, beautiful. There's two of those, and then finally guys, Sauces to finish the whole entire dish off. As I said, this sauce is absolutely delicious, so rich, really venison y, uh, put like red wine pour, it's absolutely gorgeous. So don't be don't be shy with this, get that all over that shoulder, a little bit on your fagot, and then just a little bit dotted around the plate. And there we are. The beautiful main course that I hope lives up to Tommy's starter. Have a beautiful rolled shoulder of, um, of Highland Bandit venison with a faggot, fondant potato, jerk uh, seasoned carrot, broccoli and cow puree, and your black, black currant ketchup, guys. Really do hope you enjoyed this, the, uh, the main course as well, and I will see you in a second for the dessert. Okay, I also hope you enjoyed the main course. Uh, I thought it was really delicious, really strong venison flavor, peppery, vibrant from the black currant, absolutely delicious main course. I hope it lived up to your expectations, guys, as well. So on to your dessert, guys, the final dessert, and uh, one of my favorites, peaches are just coming to season uh, for us, so uh, yeah, I've just been utilizing them because they're just absolutely delicious. So you each individually get a little pot of panna cotta, uh, which is your uh, Tahitian vanilla panna cotta, uh, set cream. And we've left this out for about 10, 15 minutes. It's a little bit sort of soft, it's got a nice little wobble to it. Uh, probably just, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend just to get it straight out of the fridge when you, when you want to obviously do it. I'd also recommend just to eat it out of the pot. Uh, those. Uh, who want to obviously try and turn it out? You can do, uh, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm certainly not going to say to you to do that. I recommend to do it. 
uh, because um, it's been set in, in, in that container and it pretty much needs to be staying in there really. So you've got some beautiful uh, French peaches that have been uh, cooked very gently in a, uh, in, a, in a lemon thyme syrup. There's a bit of lemon thyme in there. That's perfectly edible, guys, if you'd obviously like to, uh, like to pop that into dessert as well. Uh, but obviously being a leaf, it's, it's a little bit, it is a little bit leafy as well, so you can pull the leaves up like I just have But I'd very simply just pop that on top of your panna cotta. And a little bit of that sort of, that peachy syrup that's in the bottom. Just pour a little bit of that on top as well. And then you have, um, using the same peaches, we've made a delicious uh, peach sorbet, so a little bit of those little blobs each in there. So I'll take one of those out, and then I'll pop that just on top. Beautiful. And then finally, I've got a dry or well, a clean spoon. We've got a lovely maple granola, a mix sort of nut, uh, oats and nut granola, uh, which is quite coarse, I've left it quite coarse, so it sort of runs through the whole entire dish. Pop that on top, and then there, you can simply see and finish is your Tahitian vanilla uh, panna cotta with your roasted uh, and poached pear, uh, so peach peach sorbet and then your uh, maple granola on top guys, which is a, a beautiful refreshing but then equally quite sort of rich dessert to finish on uh, your meal. So guys, thank you uh, to everybody who's purchased the box this week. Uh, your support as always is so highly appreciated. Uh, I've also got to say, this is our last week at Manor Farm. So uh, we are we have obviously Elaine, uh, who owns Manor Farm, has put us up for the 18 weeks, but we are relocating to Kerbra Farm in Lichfield. So uh, that is our, as of next week. So we'll be utilising the kitchen for the Dine at Home series there. So uh, yeah, you'll see the fact you'll see the surroundings next week a little bit different to here. But I'd just like to say a huge thank you to Elaine uh, for looking after us so so amazingly well, and uh, here at uh, Manor Farm, and we'll greatly missing you, but. Uh, onwards and upwards to Kerber. It's a bigger kitchen, bigger complex, and also enables us to do a few dine at home series actually within the vicinity as well of uh, Kerber. So, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for any new uh, bits and pieces there. Uh, finally, thank you so much to Tommy uh, for obviously working with us and supporting us. Can't wait for the next collaboration next month. So, details and that will be, uh, will be obviously released later. And uh, guys, have a fantastic weekend and uh, enjoy yourself. Stay safe, dine at home, and uh, see you next week.